Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part three of my Logic Pro 11 Essentials course. In this video, I'll give you a flyover of the Logic user interface so you'll know what all of the main areas in Logic are and what they do. I'll demonstrate several helpful shortcuts for quickly navigating the tracks area, which is the main workspace in Logic Pro, where you'll record, edit, and compile your projects. I'll also give you a thorough overview of how to zoom in Logic Pro. I'll show you all of the zoom controls and the most important zoom key commands. Before we get started, I need to quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Boombox. Boombox offers secure file storage for your mixes, stems, multi-tracks, and even full DAW sessions. But it's more than just file storage. You can share project files, invite collaborators, bandmates, or clients who can then leave time-stamped feedback on your projects. And Boombox also offers a full suite of creative, collaborative, and promotional tools. If you're a producer, band, musician, or artist, you can create your own custom artist page with your photos, logo, and featured tracks. You can create public or private playlists to share your music anywhere. And Boombox has a brand new feature called Boombox AI, which is an AI co-writer. This will help you with writing chord progressions and musical ideas by generating MIDI musical ideas for you. It can help assist in writing lyrics, and it even has a built-in stem splitter and vocal remover. If you wanna give Dropbox the boot, head over to boombox.io today and sign up to get four gigabytes of free storage or upgrade to one of their pro or premium plans if you need more storage than that in addition to some pro and premium features. So probably the best way to explore Logic Pro's user interface is to download and open one of the demo projects that are included. So you can get to these by clicking demo projects in the project chooser. But if for some reason when you open up Logic, the project chooser isn't opening up automatically, go up to Logic Pro settings and then go to general. And then from here, you'll see a startup action and there's seven different startup actions. If you choose the one that says select a template, this will bring up the project chooser dialogue every time. So I'm gonna go to demo projects. The demo project that was included in the initial release of Logic Pro 11 is Ellie Dixon's Swing. But depending on what version of Logic you're using, you may see some different demo projects here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Okay, and here we are. This is what a full song project looks like with multiple tracks, lots of different content. So what I'm gonna do at this point is just explore each of the main areas in the Logic user interface, just so you know where they are, what they are, and what they do. And I'll also cover the zoom controls and some basic playback controls as well. So this main workspace here is called the tracks area. This is where you have all of your audio content, your MIDI content, this is where you can move regions around, you can make recordings, you can edit your recordings here. This is the main workspace where you'll be compiling the different elements of your project together. This is where all of your regions will go. So each one of these little colorized boxes is called a region. And a region is essentially just a container that can hold an audio recording. These can hold MIDI recordings like this. So when you see like an audio waveform, like you see here, that's an audio recording. Down here, you'll see these little dots and dashes. This is MIDI data. So these are two different types of regions. So one of your most essential sets of functions that you need to understand to properly navigate the tracks area are Logic's zoom controls. And there are a lot of different ways to zoom in Logic. So the basic way to do this is in the upper right corner, you'll see these two sliders. This one is your vertical zoom, and this one is your horizontal zoom. Now you can also click right here and zoom everything to fit the tracks area vertically. And you can click here to auto zoom horizontally but there's actually another function for this. If you are like really zoomed in or really zoomed out and you wanna fit everything within the tracks area, just click on the background of the tracks area. That basically just deselects any regions that are selected and then press Z and that will auto zoom everything in the tracks area 
to fit the window. Likewise, you can click on a region itself and press Z and it'll auto zoom that region to fit the window and then click Z again to go back. Now, another maybe quicker method to do this is to use Logic's zoom shortcuts. And there's two main ways to do this. The first method involves holding the command key on your keyboard, and then you can press up or down on the arrow keys to zoom vertically. And then you can hold command and press the left and right arrow keys to zoom horizontally. If you don't want to use the command key and arrow keys, you can also hold down the option and control keys and drag over an area to zoom in then option control click to zoom back out. Maybe I wanna check out this area over here. Option control drag to zoom in, option control click to zoom back out. Now, as you zoom in, you'll see that not only do the regions get taller, but also the track heights get taller. The tracks in the tracks area don't all have to be the same height. You can actually grab them at the track boundary and you can drag up and down to resize these. Now, if you've got a bunch of different track heights going on and you want all of them to be the same size, you can hold shift and then click on the boundary between two track headers, just like so. And what this will do is it'll make all of the tracks the same size. Now, one last type of zoom I want to demonstrate is waveform zoom. When you're working with audio recordings in audio regions like this, you'll see an audio waveform on the inside of the region. Occasionally, you'll have an audio recording that's so low that you can barely see the waveform. You can adjust that by clicking right here. This toggles the waveform zoom on and off. So right now you can see if I click on it, it's really, really up there. This doesn't affect the volume of the tracks or the gain in the regions. It's purely a waveform zoom. And if you click and hold and drag up and down, you can adjust the waveform zoom. So I can set this to like a higher value like that and then click on it to toggle off and then click again to toggle on right back to that same setting. So this just makes it so that waveforms are a little easier to see in your projects, especially if you've got like really soft audio recordings, you can pull these up a bit so you can see what you're doing on the waveforms. Okay, so there's a lot more to cover in the tracks area, including the different types of tracks, how to create them, different playback controls and transport controls that you can use out here. But one last thing I wanna show you in the tracks area is the playhead. That's this little guy right here. And you can click on it up here and drag it left and right. And you can use this as a way to navigate through your project. So if I set the playhead right here and then press space bar to start playback. Press spacebar again to stop playback. Maybe I want to jump over to a different section right here. Seems so stupid. Now I'm lucid. And if you want to set the playhead back to the beginning without manually dragging it back, you can just press return and that'll send it back to bar one. Okay, so next let me dive into some of the other areas in Logic's user interface. We're not gonna really dive deep into any of these. I'm not really gonna show you how to use any of them. I'm just gonna show you where they are, what they are, and explain what they do. So up at the top, this big gray area up at the top, this is called the control bar and display. And up here, there are some areas you can hide and show on the left. There are some other areas you can hide and show on the right. There are your transport controls or your playback controls. This area is called the LCD display and has different modes you can view it in. This shows things like the tempo of your project, your time signature and grid division, your song key, MIDI in and out monitors. And there's also an option here on the left that shows the position of your playhead in time code and in bars and beats. On the right of the LCD display are some different modes you can use. You can pull up a tuner here. You can turn on or off the metronome. And there's also a master volume slide here for your whole project. However, I don't really recommend messing with this. But one thing you can do is if you hold option and click on it, it'll set it back to zero dB. So unity gain, no added or reduced gain. And on the right, there are some additional editors that can be hidden and shown as well. So this first one, is called a list editor. This shows MIDI events, this shows markers, tempo changes, and signature changes, both key signature and time signature changes. This next one is the notepad. You can type in notes in here. You can type in lyrics. This is really helpful when you're writing lyrics for a song and 
You want to be able to store those lyrics inside the project. The next one over, I've already shown you, this is the loop browser. You can hide and show this by pressing O. And then the very last one is the project and files browser. So the project browser will show you all of the audio files associated with this project and all files will show you files on your computer. So you can go through and you can navigate your computer and select files that way. Although I generally just use the Mac OS finder when I'm trying to find external files. So I almost never use the all files browser. Now on the left of the control bar and display, there are a few additional areas that can be hidden and shown. I wanna start with this one. This one's called the inspector. You can hide and show the inspector by pressing I. And the inspector will show you parameters that are related to any selected region you have, group parameters. It'll also show you track parameters that are associated with the selected track. And if you click on this option right next to it, this is called the quick help. And what this will do is it will show the quick help either in its own dedicated dialog, or you can right click or control click on this and you can show it in the inspector as well. So the quick help is helpful because you can hover your mouse over an object and it'll explain what that object is. It says that's an audio region. This is the workspace. This is the track icon. This is the track name. This is the solo button. So the quick help can be really helpful if you're new to Logic and you're not really sure what everything is. In addition to the region and track inspector and the quick help, the inspector will also show a channel strip for whatever track you have selected. So this includes things like volume controls and pan controls, along with different audio effects. And this will be different depending on what type of track you select. So if I select one of these MIDI based tracks down here, you'll see it looks similar, but it's a little different. There's a different set of effects on here. There's a software instrument up here shown in green. You can add MIDI effects here as well. And then to the right of that channel strip is your main stereo output. This is like your main output of a mixer, for example. This stereo output is also doubled in the mixer, which we're gonna come back to in just a bit, but you can think of the stereo output as like the final output for like a mixer. So that's the inspector. If I click here, this is the library and you can hide and show the library by pressing Y. This will come into play more when we start learning how to use tracks, but the library essentially allows you to load up presets for different types of tracks. So if I select a MIDI based track, this is gonna give me a bunch of different instrument presets I can pick from. If I select an audio track, this is gonna give me audio effects presets that I can choose from. If you click here, this will show a toolbar in addition to the control bar and you can click again to hide that. Although most of these tool functions I don't actually use from here because there are some very helpful shortcuts that make using these tools even quicker. Now, the last area I wanna show you are the editors and it's actually multiple different areas all in the same location. Up here, you can click to show your smart controls. You can click here to show your mixer and you can click here to show your editors. Now the smart controls allow you to control parameters on a particular track. It kind of condenses all of the effects down into like one set of macro controls. Again, we'll come back to these later on in the course. If you click on the mixer, this will show you all of the tracks in your project and it'll show you all the channel strip settings for every track in the project. So all of your effects, your inputs, your sends, your routing, your automation settings, volume controls, pan controls, and like I was saying before, on the far right, there's a stereo output, and then there's an additional master VCA, which is tied to the project volume up here. And with any control in Logic, if you option click on it, it will reset that back to its default value. So this works in the mixer as well. It works with pan knobs. It works with a lot of different things in Logic. And if you don't like how wide the channels are here in the mixer, you can click here to sort of do a narrow view of the channels. And you can also press X on your keyboard to quickly hide and show the mixer. Now the last set of editors are going to be dependent on what type of region you have selected. So if I select an audio region, I get the track and file and smart tempo editors here. But if I select a MIDI region, like this one right here, 
you'll see it opens up the piano roll editor, which is a MIDI editor. And there are a lot of different types of editors down here. There's a score editor. There's even a step sequencer editor. There's a separate editor for the session players. So we'll come back to all of these in future videos, but in order to hide and show the editor for the selected region, you can press E. So this will hide and show it. So if I select a MIDI region and then press E, it opens up a MIDI editor. If I select an audio region and press E, it opens up an audio editor. So E can be used to hide and show those editors. Okay, so those are all of the main areas in the Logic user interface. In the next videos, we're going to be moving on to transport controls and using tracks and getting more acquainted with the tracks area. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.